Hey everyone and welcome back to ProMix Academy. My name is Carlo Libertini. Thanks for joining me. Now in this video, we're going to be looking at some of the new updated features in the project page here in Studio One Pro 5.5. And those tools are the updated loudness tools that are now integrated with Studio One Pro here. Now why? Well, it's simple because Built into Studio One, as you may know already, is the project page. You can literally mix a song and then bring it into a mastering project and then go back and further tweak the mix and then update that mastering project file easily and simply. It's literally a very advanced, easy and smooth workflow. So once you get to the project page, like I have here, I've imported a couple of songs, one, two, three, four songs. You can see them listed right here. You can begin to prepare them for distribution. Now, perhaps like many of you, I'm not sure. I have started to think about my mixes in advance, meaning that while I'm mixing, I already have a target loudness standard in mind. So I started mixing to a loudness standard rather than just hammering it out and then often reducing things to a loudness standard and sometimes increasing them to a loudness standard. And when you mix to a loudness standard, like I have gotten into the habit of doing, I find that my mastering isn't so aggressive. So that's just something I wanted to share with you. It's a tip and I suggest you try it. Uh, all right, but now back to this. Now what we're looking at here is the project page. Now you can import any number of songs here. And this is where you can create a whole mastering project. You've got CD burning, CD delivering if you want, and digital release. Why don't we start here with the digital release tab? Now, I just, just, this is great. Here are the songs that we have the tracks and you can tick them on and off. So if I want to apply any of this here, it's going to apply to all of the songs I have selected here on my tracks list. And what does that mean? Well, I could choose a location and you could do batch exporting now. I could do a WAV file, AIFF, FLAC, MP4, all of these, MP3, all at the same time if you wanted for all of these tracks. Just <laughs> keep track of everything, right? There is a pun there. And now you could choose your resolution, 16-bit, 44.1. It goes up to obviously 64-bit and up to 192 kilohertz. Okay, so you could do batch waveform processing here. And one of my favorite parts is you can actually here under options, add track numbers or even the artist's name. I like that, good for organizing. I don't need that for this project right, right now because the artist is me. And here's our loudness. Now, if you want to know what some loudness value standards are built right into here under digital release, I can choose from this drop down and say, hmm, what's the difference between YouTube music, minus 14 with the max peak of a minus one and let's say Amazon music. Look at that, minus 14 with a max peak of minus two. So there is a slight difference there. Let's go to, let's say Spotify, and it's the same as YouTube music-ish. Uh, Apple Music, minus 16. So this is giving me information in advance. And what's really cool about this is when I choose OK, I know that my files are going to be compatible with that loudness standard, which means Apple Music isn't going to turn it down or up for me. I'm doing that in advance, which means you're in complete creative control, not only the mixing, the mastering, but the deliverable too. So this will automatically do it for us and we'll try that. So let me cancel this out. Let's get back to our waveforms. Now, talking about updated loudness standards, here we've got a beautiful metering here, a spectrogram and our LUFs. We can actually get our loudness units for, uh, full scale right here. And why don't we take a listen to one of these songs? Now, these are demos that I'm working on with my indie rock group. And let's take a listen. I, I got stuck in Quincy. Now, notice I can actually change the graph at any time. Let's go to segments. I, I got stuck Isn't that beautiful? in Quincy. Let's go to curve. I, I like this one. FFT. Stuck in Quincy, and they say that and it's on the South Shore, but I can't find the beach. And nice. And so this is where we're starting. But notice now, when I selected this track here, 
See, it's selected here. I can scroll through the different selections. What Glendale selected, the first track we're listening to, it says update loudness standards. This is where it gets really good. I'm going to clear my master bus. Now, here's track one. Here's the inserts for track one right here. So you can do individual mastering processing per track. And this is the box you would do it. You'd come here and say, hey, let's start mastering this. And uh, hmm, let's say I want to do something, uh, some vintage mastering. It, this is a template you could get started with. And then when I select track two, look at that. Of course, I don't have any inserts on track two and so on and so on. So you could have a track by track individual mastering if you want it that way. And let me remove it there. Here is our master bus for all of the tracks. So if I was to apply something on the master here, and let's pick a, an easy one, I'll do smooth and clear. This is now going to affect all the tracks. So when I select them, you'll see that this mastering processing will be applied to all of them globally. So that's something to really keep in mind. So the inserts here, this box right here, would be individual. This area is globally. And you can also actually insert effects pre and post fader. I noticed that there really isn't too much of a difference there, but this is good to have. For example, on our master, you could probably apply an extra limiter if you needed to. That's just an example. All right, now let's have a little bit of fun here. When I select this track, track one, I'm gonna choose update loudness. It's actually looking in, in as fast as this, it's gonna give me my loudness information. But remember, I have mastering now here on the master bus, so it's going to account for that. So when I select this track, it's telling me now that pre-FX, I'm at about minus 19. In post, I'm about minus 16. So that's pretty good. I'm already well within ballpark for a deliverable, let's say, for Amazon Music or YouTube. And you can get more and more detailed with that. And as you make changes, for example, let's take the mastering off of the, that, you'll see that it now in yellow says update loudness. Studio One Pro here is smart enough to know that, hey, something happened, you need to update the loudness. So with this track still selected, I'll choose update loudness. And previously you would have to play a track completely in real time to calculate the accurate loudness standard. But now thanks to advancements here, like in Studio One Pro 5.5 here, we could do it as quickly as the blink of an eye. Now it's telling me that pre a night minus 19 and post minus 19, it should be the same and it is. So I'm starting with this track at an average loudness of minus 19. Let's select the next track. Let's update the loudness for this one. This track is called Love How You Love Me. So it's giving me an average of minus 15 to get started with, minus 15.7. And the next one, Mad Love, which is track three. Uh, let's see about minus 16.1 and let's go to retail which is a four track right here let's update the loudness standard so this is the loudness we're starting with with each of these tracks and this one's about minus 16.8 so as i mentioned before to circle back i have a habit now of mixing to a target standard initially myself doesn't mean it's a limitation it kind of just gives me the opportunity to be more creative once I know what the standard is. I just work within that zone. I pay more attention to detail and frequency that way, and I don't have to worry about loudness wars or any kind of BS like that. Now, back to this. Okay, let's start mastering these files. As I said, you could do a track by track if you wanted. Let's do that. Right now here, here on the inserts for track one, let's go back to our mastering presets and let's throw, let's throw smooth and clear on there. Now, if I want to know what the loudness will be with this mastering chain, let's play the audio actually. I'm getting a loudness reading here in real time, minus 16. It's much better than the original minus 19. And let's update it so it'll give us a full measurement of the entire track, track one that we have selected. And there we go, it's now minus 16.4. So pre was minus 19, post minus 16.4 and that's using this insert here individually so you can create individual mastering per track track by track like that let's go back to this one and 
I will stay with smooth and clear update and doing this not in real time, but in computer time saves a lot of time. So this one's now at minus 12. This one minus 15. So this one's a little bit loud. So what could we do here? I could do a couple of things. I could actually lower here with the clip gain. And if you do choose to do that, let's say I just, for example, I lowered it uh, minus 1.2, let go. Again, it's telling me to hey, update this so you can get the most up-to-date accurate information. So let's see what kind of change that makes. We're going to go from minus 12.8 to a loudness of minus 13.4. That's roughly minus 14. That would be perfect for YouTube music right there. Let's go to the next one. I'll insert the same mastering chain. Go to smooth and clear. And let's update here in the song Mad Love. Okay. So we're doing track by track. Now you don't have to again. You could put it globally on the mastering. I personally like to do track by track a little bit because I can also manipulate the EQ and dynamics in particular and do any particular limiting if I want. But it's the process I want to show you and how these new mastering loudness tools are integrated and super easy to use. So here we have an average of minus 13.1 where we started with minus 16. So I can take the dynamics, open that up, and we could begin tweaking this if I wanted. You could turn the gain down here just a little bit and any change I do, look at that. Obviously, it's giving me some information. It's saying, hey, you got to update this. And I'm doing this again. For example, let's update it now. Any change you make on a track by track basis, so smart and easy to use. Minus 14.1. Perfect. Now let's go to the last song, Retail. And this one is, let's see, it's about minus 16.8. Let's put that same mastering chain on there because I do like that one. It's one of my particular favorites. Smooth and clear. And let's update the loudness now. And this song is about four and a half for almost five minutes long. And look how quickly it's doing it. It's actually detecting the loudness now in only in about four seconds. Minus 13.6, that's actually pretty good. Post, it was 16.8. So I am relatively confident now that obviously we need to sonically listen to these. But the principle of this video was to show you the loudness tools and how to utilize them. Now your workflow might be a little different. So I just want to make you aware of what's available. You could obviously change things around. You could have a different kind of metering settings. You could use your own personal mastering chain. Uh, you could put mastering here right on the master bus if you wanted. Anything, sky's the limit. But now you know that you are in complete control of your loudness standards, no matter what the deliverable is. Let's take a listen now to this track, track one again. There. Quincy in my mind. So of course I would go back and listen to these oh, as critically as me. as I want. I know, I know that. So again, you have a real time meter right here, and you have the super fast loudness information on hand per track at any time. So you can see we're on track four named retail. Here's Glendale, track two, track three, track, track two, track three, track four. Okay, now if I wanted to now get these ready for digital release, come up to digital release. With all the tracks selected, I just want WAV files. I want them 16-bit 44.1, let's say that was CD standard, of course. And I want them to go to YouTube music, one of my favorites, I love YouTube music, and choose okay. Now, as easily as that, Studio One Pro here is applying your unique mastering chain, whether it's globally on the master bus or independently on each individual track, and it's going to conform them to... Now, we got pretty close to that loudness standard already. And as I said before, I like to do that independently. So I'm in as much creative control as possible of my music and not letting YouTube's algorithm squash it down or turn it up for me. So when I feel like I'm in more creative control of that, uh, you know, it also teaches me, again, how to mix towards a loudness standard quite often. And again, I like to try to mix with a loudness standard somewhere between 14 and 17. Try it yourselves. And um, if you have any creative comments, you know, please let us know at any time. So as soon as this is done, we'll jump right back into it. Okay, just a few seconds left. That did not take long, trust me. Two, one, 
zero. So we just mastered four songs. And what else did we do? We prepared them for our target deliverables, which in this case was YouTube music, but you could choose anything, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon Music, or just any kind of standards or even make your own. So here's the four tracks, Glendale. And uh, these are obviously WAV files that I rendered at 16-bit 44.1. So I feel confident now that if I upload these to YouTube Music, for example, they will be not only sounding great, but they won't be affected by their algorithms to turn them up or down, which is fine if that's what you want. But again, to circle back, I like to be in creative control as much as possible. And there you have it. There's some of the new loudness tools that are available in Studio One Pro version here, 5.5. Now, I know we covered quite a bit, but I really wanted to show you more of the process and how you can jumpstart your own creativity and take control of your projects from beginning to the end completely. And as always, stay busy and stay creative, everyone. And thank you for watching. Hey everyone, and thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Leave your comments below. Like, share, and subscribe.